Hey everyone, and welcome back. You might remember a few days ago we released a video on tearing down an evolution engine for Brian out of Ohio. And uh, we were tearing that one down to do a case swap. Now, of course, since we had this engine disassembled anyway, I can't very well just put it back together for Brian, leaving it as is. We need to check a lot of things along the way before we put it back together, right? It's a good opportunity just to see how things are in the health of that engine. And uh, Brian beat the living snot out of this bike. Hey. You guys will have to excuse me. It's late and I'm tired. <laughs> it's well after hours. I don't even know what time it is. Guys have been gone for a few hours. So we're kind of burning the midnight oil here. So just bear with me, all right? It, quite often people will uh, send us a set of heads and they'll ask us just to check them out. And after we check them out, they'll wonder why there was a fee attached to that. And quite frankly, there's a lot more to checking out a set of heads and various other things than just having a look at them and taking them apart. Uh, so what I'm gonna show you in this video on these heads for that evolution is uh, the steps that we go through when we check out a set of heads to make sure that they're okay and they'll provide a bunch of years of life uh, in service after. Uh, and the, a lot of the procedures you're going to see me doing here are the exact same proge procedures that we perform when we're doing a set of heads from scratch, all right? So we're going to be checking a lot of different things along the way. Now, if, you might remember in the teardown, there was one part where uh, when I pulled the head, I had mentioned that he, uh, he had a, an intake valve stem seal problem. And, of course, uh, he did. Uh, fact is, right here, when I pulled off the rear intake, as you would have seen on that video, that valve stem seal right there was broken. All right, and here's, uh, here's a couple of pieces of it here, uh, the tops. Now, a couple of things could have caused this, and these are things that I need to make sure uh, of before we just put it back together. They could have broken just because they broke, or that particular one. It could just be one of those things. Uh, the other is uh, it could actually be due to the, combina the cam combination that he's running in this and also a valve spring retainer and, uh, you know, and their installed height of the spring uh, and so, it, and it, you know, lift of the cam, that sort of thing. So it could have broken because the retainer tapped the valve stem seal. So before I just put new valve stem seals in it and put it back together, I want to make sure that that's not an issue for him, and uh, and then we're going to check it out. So as you can see, again, I've disassembled the heads. They are actually in really good shape. Uh, the valve seats are fantastic. There's only a little bit of pitting, a very small amount here uh, on the intake and the exhaust. The seat looks nice there. Uh, there's no need for us to do really any valve seat work. Uh, these pits that are in it are very, very small. Uh, so more than likely, I can just hand lap these valves back in and not have to do a valve job on them at all, and that'll save Brian some money. Uh, and the same, and it was only the intake on this one that was pitted. Uh, I don't see those that pitting on uh, the front head, okay? I also don't see any pitting on the exhaust seat on that one. That pitting could be because of the valve stem seal leak, okay? Building up a little carbon in there and that sort of thing. Uh, look at the valves, the valve seat area. Uh, the valve seat area looks nice. And yeah, the intake all the way around. So I, there's no pitting on the valve whatsoever, and it's got a good concentric sealing ring on it. Uh, we'll know better uh, once I take, I, I will take this valve and uh, blast it and get it really nice and clean. We're going to do the same thing uh, in the chamber and the seats and the ports, clean that up really good. And then, of course, I'll drop the valve into the seat, see if it's sealed proper. And if it is, then uh, I'm just going to hand lap it in to reseat it, and I think we'll be good to go there. So one of the, uh, the, the first places that we're going to start is actually take, just take a good look at the valve itself. I, I don't see a lot of uneven wear uh, on, you know, if we start, if we're working on the rear head here, and then we'll work our way down, uh, there's a little bit of wear here, and uh, he is running a pretty aggressive cam in this thing, a high lift cam. So I would expect for him to see a little bit of side load on, 
on that valve and there is a little extra wear up here at the top in that area there so that would be you know at your maximum lift when it could be pushing the valve to one side not really uncommon to see in, in a high lift cam application uh, i see the exact same thing at the top here on the intake we move to the front head i see the exact same thing in this area right here where it looks a little more polished uh, but there's no galling or anything like that that's there and I see the exact same thing on this one in this area right here. All right, so that could simply be just because of, again, uh, cam lift, right? A little bit of side load there. But what that is is an indication that it could also uh, have affected the bore of the, uh, of the valve guide. It could be, you know, off to one side, stretched open a little bit. So we're going to go through the process of checking valve stem to guide clearances and if he's good there we can clean those up put them back together if he's not then we need to replace the valve guides okay just like a a cylinder a dial bore gauge um this this tool is specifically for measuring valve guides okay and this is what you call a comparator gauge very like much like the dial bore gauge you know fixture here and uh, for measuring cylinders you dial this into zero compared to the part that you're using uh, or the size your desired final size and uh, it kind of calibrates your gauge and then it shows you the differential it's essentially showing you the clearance now the way that this is done uh, using this tool is you have this small setting fixture here now we know these valve stems are 5 16 Okay, so we know that these are 5 16 valve stems. So the first thing I'm going to do is double check that, that size and see where we're at. All right, perfect. Okay, we've got the same size on both, but what I want to do also is I want to check this wear area and measure that. Then I'm going to spin it 180, measure it again, and we've got less than a tenth of a thou difference there. I want to check it down here at the bottom. Oh yeah, we have less than a tenth of a thousandth difference. Now we're going to compare the two. Yep, let's rotate it in that wear area. Yeah, right at two tenths, excuse me, one and a half tenths variance there. Yeah, we're, we're good from valve to valve, okay? Now, let me grab a microfiber, make sure we're nice and clean here. And what I'm doing to set up using the setting fixture, I'm gonna use both valve stems, and that will establish my zero for my gauge. So many tools and setting fixtures in a machine shop are about the feel, you know, just experience and even down to how much you tighten down this clamp. So it's, you know, with this, I found the most accuracy. If I lock it down pretty good and then back it off about an eighth to a quarter of a turn, then we can take our gauge and zero it out. Okay. Now, let's check each head. Okay, now this uh, on his... Rear exhaust, as I had mentioned, you know, we may have a little side loading on that. Uh, in this position, I have about right at eight tenths clearance. And in this position, I would have 1.2 tenths. Now let's do the intake, and then we'll do the same for both heads. Yeah, we have one and 1.2 on the intake. Now let's do the front. We're good on valve guides. Yeah, we're at 1.2 there. One and 1.2, so it has stretched a little bit or worn a little. And then on his, his exhaust, we have a minimum of and 1.2. 
So 1.2 max on both. We're good on valve guts. So the other thing that we have to remember is our stems could be different sizes. So a lot of manufacturers, they will, they will make their exhaust valve stem slightly smaller than the intake valve stem. And they do this so that you can use the same reamers for all four guides. And they'll compensate for the clearance difference by making the exhaust valve stem just a little bit smaller. Typically two to four tenths of a thousandth smaller. So being that we use the intake valve to set up our fixture, we could do this a couple different ways. We could either remove these, put the exhaust in there, reset our fixture and measure, or we can simply just measure our stem and apply the difference. So we measured all of these at 1.2 based off the diameter of the intake valve stem. So if I measure the exhaust valve stem and we had 1.2, if I measure here, we're couple of different places. We're basically two tenths, two tenths smaller on that one. Let's check this one. Two tenths smaller and two tenths smaller on that one as well. Okay, so basically our 1.2 clearance that we measured using that stem now becomes 1.4 on the exhaust valves. You know, knowing that this is actually this guide material and the valve material, that sort of thing, uh, that's a little bit more than I would like to see. We're basically talking on the intake valve side, uh, we're basically about three, maybe four tenths of a thousandths larger than ideal on a new set of valves and guides, how I would set these up with these materials. And then for the exhaust, same thing. It would normally, I would probably normally set it up with a clearance of about 1.2 thousandths. Instead, I measure 1.4. So it has grown about two tenths of a thousandths, but that's well within an acceptable tolerance. And, you know, talking to Brian, the owner, he's going to continue to beat the living fool out of this thing. And, uh, you know, it's not a super high mileage bike. He's not going to be doing touring on it or anything like that. He, you know, he hops on it and rides the fool out of it and rides it back home. So I, I, I think for two tenths, we're well within range here. And there's no reason for him to pay me to put all new valves and, and guides in it. Because then understand too, if I put new guides in it, then I also have to put a, a, do a, a valve job on it you know, and cut the seats and all that stuff. So it really adds to the expense. You know, if he was two to three tenths bigger than what I've measured and you had more clearance there, then I would probably recommend doing a valve swap and, and valve guides. But in this case, he doesn't need to do it. So for his purpose, I think this is gonna work great for him. So we are good to go on our valve stem clearances. Now, the next thing, we need to check all of our valve springs. So we're gonna do that by checking the installed height of each individual spring. We're then going to uh, check that seat pressure and then we'll look at the cam specifications and find out from the cam manufacturer what their recommended spring pressure is at maximum lift. And we're gonna use those numbers along with the variance between one spring to the other to determine exactly what, uh, ex whether these springs are any good or not, right? And so, I don't know who actually manufactured these springs, and so, but we have a pretty good idea. I mean, knowing and experience, just knowing what these valve seat pressures could be. So we're taking these multiple measurements, comparing one to the other, and looking at seat pressure and pressure at max lift to determine the springs are any good. It's not unusual to have uh, as much as maybe about a 10% variance in seat pressure at a given installed height, but we want to verify these installed heights as well just to see exactly where we're at. So, uh, and this is how you do that. I'm going to pop the valves in. One inch 760. Now we move to the rear intake. The other thing I want to make sure when I'm doing this, I want to use the actual uh, retainer because there could be some wear. Now these are titanium retainers, so I wouldn't expect to see very much wear on these, but we, we need to account for that. That's one inch 760. So we've got one inch 755 on the front intake. Hmm, that's one inch 750. And I've already calibrated this, so we're going to have a look at our, this is going to be the rear exhaust. And at the rear exhaust, we have an installed height at 1 inch 760. 
that puts us at 139 and that's at 135 and that's at 142 we're still we're still within our 10 percent variance from one to the other so that's only we're only talking four or five pounds now what i want to do is i'm going to go back and look at what it would be at max lift so i know he's got a, a 600 lift cam so what's going to happen here is basically we're going to and that's 600 lift at cam okay or excuse me 600 lift at valve so uh we're basically going to compress the spring another 600 thousands this also gives us an opportunity to look for coil bind to see if we have any in the middle and we don't we still have you know and plenty of room between the coils there so at one inch 150 on the front exhaust we have 375 no coil bind and we have 370 pounds that's fantastic we're at 366 and we're at 373 this is fantastic now one thing that I want to do, since I know all the springs are good, since I know all the springs are good, the one thing that I want to do is to try to balance out that seat pressure. Okay? So if we take a look at what the, or the spring pressure. So if we take a look at the spring pressures, uh, we had front intake, front exhaust was at 135 and 142. Uh, on the rear intake, we had 134 and then we had 139. Well, our installed height on the rear intake is about is 10 to 15 thousandths taller than the others. So what I'm going to do is grab the rear intake and put it at basically estimating like maybe a 15 thousandth shim, give or take, uh, to put it at a, a uh, let's say a 1745 installed height. And so we're going to compress it 15 thousandths more with the shim, and then let's see what our pressures are at. And we're going to do that on the rear, uh, the rear intake. At 1760 was 134. So let's take, let's put a 15 thousandth shim under that, and let's go to one inch 745, and see where we're at. That puts us at 138. That's a lot closer. So what we're going to do on this is uh, basically we're going to put a 15,000 shim underneath the rear intake and that's going to get all the others within four or five of each other instead of being 10 off on that rear intake. The next thing I want to double check since I'm again at one inch, seven, uh, one inch 745, then I'm going to pull, uh, let's go to max lift again to one inch 145 for a six, 600 lift cam. So one inch, 145, and let's see where that puts us. Oh, that's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. So at one inch, 145, that puts us at, uh, there's a late night train going by. It must be about 10 o'clock. Uh, at one inch, 145, that puts us at 373 pounds. At, at this point, we know that the springs are good based off measuring everything, all four, we're just adding that 15,000 shim. That'll get us very, very close on all four. The only other thing I'm gonna double check is I'm gonna speak to the cam manufacturer and find out exactly what they recommend for seat pressure and open pressure and see if we're very close. If we are, uh, then uh, the, we're good to go. We just put the 15,000 shim under there and we balanced everything out. If they recommend a bit of a higher seat pressure, then uh, I can also shim all four of them accordingly, but then I also have to go back and check for coil bind if it's too far. We had quite a bit of difference in, in each of the individual coils, so uh, I'm, I, we're not going to have to shim these things 80 thou, 100 thou, or anything like that, and, and we had at least, uh, we had plenty of room between the coils, so I'm not at all concerned about that. Uh, and as far as the valve guides, uh, we're very close. We're a little broad on them, uh, as indicated with the valve stems, measuring the clearances there. You know, we're at 1.2, 1.4, 1.2, and 1.4 tenths. Uh, that's about, again, about four tenths, three to four tenths more 
than if these heads were new, I would say. Uh, shooting for a target somewhere around 8 tenths and 1.2 tenths clearance. Uh, but, you know, it's still well within specification, right? And uh, in, with how he's going to use this thing, you know, it's not a high mileage touring bike, but he's going to beat the fool out of it. Uh, but there's really no need for us to go through all that. You also have to remember, if I did go in and replace the guides, we would have to do an entire valve job and all that as well. And with as many miles, hard miles he has on this, and as little as it's worn over that period of time, I don't expect it to wear much more uh, with the amount of time that he's going to be riding it. So there's no justification to charge him to put, put new guides in it. It's, they're good. Uh, I see no issues there. So in the next video, uh, I'm going to come back, but what I'm going to do in the meantime is uh, actually uh, blast the valves. I'm going to get them cleaned. Uh, one important thing to point out, if you're, if you're bead blasting valves, make sure to put a you know, rubber hose or something over the stem itself to protect it so you don't contaminate it. Uh, so we're going to clean all the carbon off there. The seats look good. The contact area on the valve look good. So there's really no need to reface the valve that I can see at this point uh, just by looking at it, but we're going to check it. Uh, we'll get everything cleaned up, blast the chamber, make sure to mask off and plug the areas in the valve guide as well. You don't want to uh, get any contamination there. And uh, then we'll go back and drop the valves on the seat and check for concentricity. And then we're also going to check the seal. We'll pressure test the chamber and, and make sure we've got a good valve seal there. And just from the condition of them, I, it looks like I'm not going to have to do much more than maybe just a little bit of hand lapping just to smooth them out. And uh, other than that, uh, the heads will be good to go. So we've still got several hours worth of work cleaning these up, putting them back together and all that type of stuff. So that's how you check out a set of heads. From there, we're going to torque plate the cylinders. This is going to be in, of course, other video. Torque plate the cylinders, measure piston cylinder clearance, and, and go down that road. And then we'll move on to the next step. So checking out cylinder heads. Hope you enjoyed it, guys. Uh, thank you to our members. Thank you to our subscribers. You guys are awesome. We're this close to 50,000. I think we're only like 140 away. And uh, at the beginning of the year, I'd mentioned it'd be nice, you know, to have that goal uh, to hit 50,000 subs uh, by the end of the year. We're within 140 from getting there. Isn't that crazy? Uh, two and a half years doing this stuff and 50,000 subs, and I owe it to you guys. It's absolutely awesome, and thank you for being a part of it. Thank you for your support, your comments, uh, and your kind words. It, uh, it means a great deal to me. So, uh, guys, I hope you have a, a wonderful, well, it's Friday for me, so I hope you have a wonderful weekend, and uh, I think I'm going to go home and eat some dinner and, and get some rest. Take care of yourselves and each other. Have a good one.